This is not the answer. And if they start coming out with the economic arguments, it's all blown out of the water. Once you put the environmental damage and the cost to human health, look at the list of the harmed. Look at what's happening in Pennsylvania. People are getting really sick. Livestock is dying. The frack field workers are getting silicosis in their lungs. You cannot regulate this safely. This is a nonsense, and our ministers are being deeply irresponsible. It makes no sense. At least Ed Davey is saying that the public need to be convinced of the safety of it, but they can't be. There is nothing that anybody in this industry can say to me, and I've been studying this for a year, as a layperson concerned, there's nothing that will convince me that this can be done safely. Well, what, what about the experience in America? Because we've seen sick workers, we've seen uh, allegations that gas is coming out of water taps and people can strike a light. I mean, uh, the industry doesn't have a great reputation, does it? Well, you have to look at it uh, on a on a case by case basis. Uh, I think it, uh, to, because uh, if uh, for and it could be any number of factors. It could be to do with the design. It could be to do with the implementation. It could be to do with materials. All sorts of reasons why certain individual wells or, or facilities have gone wrong. But if you look across the U.S. as a whole, you know, nearly 25 percent of the uh, of the gas that's consumed by the U.S. is now coming from shale gas. So there's a, uh, there's thousands and thousands of wells that are successful. Um, uh, and I think, you and know, we, and we have enough evidence for that the workers there are remaining healthy, do we? Well, it, it's uh, probably too short uh, a time scale to, uh, to be absolutely definitive on it. Uh, uh, but the, uh, uh, it comes down to the safeguards from the, uh, the regulation and from the, uh, the, the actual design and engineering. If those are done to the appropriate codes and those are going to get tightened as well, then you have the mm. possibility. Okay. Now, what about the economic argument in your view for Britain? What does this mean for Britain in your view? So the first thing is that shale gas is not the panacea. It's not going to mean that we are completely independent of, uh, of our reliance on uh, imported gas. Uh, and secondly, it's not going to replace all of our uh, options like renew renewable, renewable energy. What it does is it offsets a lot of the imports that we need to do, as it did for the US. So, uh, and it provides us that level of uh, independence, uh, of security. We can reduce uh, the, the uh, imports uh, at higher prices, which then affects our balance of payments, and you know, we, we can get a balance sur surplus that way. Uh, and uh, over a period of time, what you'll actually find is that um, it will compensate for uh, the sort of uh, reduction in revenues that we're going to get from the North Sea. Vanessa uh, Vine, those are, those, are, th those are pretty big economic prizes, aren't they? No, they're not. They're not. If we take all the unconventional methane out of the UK, coal bed methane, shale gas, we might keep the lights on for 15 to 20 years. And then what? We will have contaminated our water courses. We will have poured billions of tons of CO2 extra into the atmosphere. We'll have despoiled the landscape, industrialized large parts of it. We won't, crucially, have invested in safe truly sustainable renewable energy technologies and energy efficiency, which is what we need for proper energy security and jobs for the future that we are then independent in being sustainable with. This is all nonsense. You cannot legislate for the vagaries of subterranean geology. Okay. You can't do this safely. This is about money. It's not about ecological intelligence, and our ministers are deeply irresponsible in sanctioning it. I'm furious. All right. Okay. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Shawcat and Vanessa Vine.